Okay, so ready for another deep dive? Absolutely, let's do it. All right, so picture this. You walk into a casino, feeling lucky, and ready to maybe put some money down. All right. Now, would you bet everything you have on one spin of the roulette wheel? Uh, probably not, no. Probably not, right? Most people wouldn't. That's where the idea of smart betting comes in. Yeah. It's about understanding how much to risk, how much to put on the line to try and get those gains without the risk of wiping out, you know, losing it all. Right, exactly. So today we're going to dive into this idea of smart betting through the lens of the Kelly Criterion. Okay. It's a mathematical formula that can help you figure out that optimal bet size. Right. And not just in casinos. Exactly. And yeah. that's what's so interesting about it. Yeah. This isn't just about gambling. It applies to so many things, investing, trading, even making decisions in your everyday life. Absolutely. It's about finding that sweet spot, you know, between being too conservative on one hand and missing out on potential gains. And then on the other hand, being too reckless and, you know, risking a huge loss. So the Kelly Criterion is all about finding that balance. I like that. And our source material actually dives into this using trading as an example. Yeah, makes sense. So it talks about how using this Kelly Criterion can potentially lead to much greater returns over time than simply going all in or all out on a particular stock. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. I think of it this way, right? Investing is kind of like sailing a ship. You want to catch enough wind in your sails to move forward swiftly. Okay. But too much wind and you could capsize the boat, right? You know? That makes sense. Yeah. So the Kelly Criterion, it kind of helps you find that balance. It helps you how much wind to catch, so to speak, by considering the probability of a favorable outcome, like a stock price going up, let's say. Right. So that's like the wind direction. Exactly. Okay. And then also the magnitude of the potential profit versus the potential loss on that trade. So that's the strength of the wind. Exactly. Yeah. You got it. I like that analogy. Yeah. So it's not just about picking the right stocks, but also strategically managing how much you're actually putting in. Right to maximize your potential gains, but also minimize that chance of a big wipeout. Exactly. Yeah, it helps you find that sweet spot. You know, we were mm -hmm. talking about between being too conservative and missing out and being too reckless and risking everything. And the source even gives a simplified formula for calculating this. Right. It's probability of profit minus probability of loss divided by win-loss ratio. Yeah, it seems a little complicated at first glance, you know, when you look at it on paper. Yeah, it's a little intimidating. But it's actually quite intuitive when you think about it and how you would apply it to a trading strategy, for example. So walk me through that. Give me an example. Yeah, so let's say you have a trader and they have a strategy that has a high win rate, which means they're winning more often than they lose and their average wins are significantly larger than their losses. In that scenario, the Kelly Criterion would suggest a larger bet size. Because the potential reward is higher. Exactly, because the potential reward outweighs the risk in that case. But it's important to remember, this isn't just blindly plugging numbers into a formula. Yeah, you can just grab a calculator. Exactly. You need to have a good understanding of your trading strategy's historical performance. You need to be able to accurately estimate your win rate, what we talked about, right. and the typical size of your wins and losses. So you're not just betting, you're using data and analysis to inform your decisions. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You're being a more informed gambler, so to speak, whether you're dealing with stocks, business decisions, or even personal choices. Okay. It's about understanding why that bet size makes sense, given your historical performance. And that's where this gets really interesting. So you're saying it's not just about, you know, like maximizing returns. It's also about understanding why that particular bet size makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. Let's say your trading strategy has consistently generated profits over time. The Kelly criterion might suggest a larger bet size compared to a strategy that's barely breaking even. Okay. And this is because the Kelly criterion incorporates the concept of what's called geometric growth of capital. 
geometric growth. I'm not really familiar with that term. So imagine this. You flip a coin, you win double your money on heads, but lose everything on tails. Okay, high stakes. Yeah, if you bet all your money each time a single loss, and you're wiped out, right? Makes sense, yeah. But by betting a smaller calculated percentage, even with some losses along the way, your wins compound on previous wins over time. Okay. That's the idea of geometric growth in action. I see. So it helps you ride those waves of you know, wins and losses more effectively. Exactly. And it can lead to much better returns over the long term. The long game. Yeah. And the research we looked at actually back tested a simple trading strategy using moving averages. Okay. And they applied the Kelly criterion to determine the bet size for each trade. And guess what? It resulted in a significantly higher return than a benchmark strategy that used a fixed bet size. Wow. Okay, so it actually works. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. But now you might be thinking, what about the risk? Did the Kelly criterion increase the potential for losses as well? Right. If you're getting higher returns, is there more risk involved? That's where it gets even more interesting. So the research found that while the Kelly criterion did boost returns, it didn't drastically increase the maximum potential loss. Okay. Which is often referred to as the drawdown. So the drawdown stayed relatively similar. Yeah, pretty much the same as the benchmark strategy. Higher returns without significantly increasing the risk. Exactly. Yeah, that's what makes the Kelly criterion so appealing. It sounds almost too good to be true. What's the catch? Well, the catch is that it's not a set it and forget it kind of solution. Oh, so you can't just plug it in and let it run. Yeah, the research highlighted that the optimal parameters, okay. like how far back you look at your trading history to calculate your win rate, for example, mm. can actually vary depending on your specific strategy and the market conditions. So there's some nuance to it. Yeah, for sure. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. And in fact, blindly applying the full Kelly bet size, as suggested by the formula, can sometimes be too aggressive. Okay. Especially in volatile markets. Makes sense. So many traders actually use what's called fractional Kelly. Fractional Kelly. Okay, break that down for me. It's simply a way to scale down your bet size to a more comfortable level. Okay. So, for instance, half Kelly means you're betting only half of what the formula suggests. Got it. While double Kelly means you're doubling the suggested bet size. So you're kind of adjusting it based on your own risk tolerance. Exactly, yeah. It gives you more control over your risk tolerance. But even with fractional Kelly, it's important to remember that no trading strategy, including one guided by the Kelly criterion, can completely eliminate the risk of losses. Right. Of course, markets are inherently unpredictable. Exactly. There are always factors that you just can't fully account for. So the data is important. You can't mm -hmm. just blindly trust everything. Absolutely. That's why the source really emphasizes the importance of testing and understanding how the Kelly criterion works within your specific trading context. It's not about finding a magic formula that guarantees profits, but rather a framework for making more informed decisions about managing risk and optimizing potential returns. So it's more about finding that balance right. between maximizing gains and minimizing losses. Exactly. But it requires some, you know, careful consideration adaptation, understanding your own risk tolerance and your trading strategy. Absolutely. And here's the thing. Even if you're not a trader, this whole idea of balancing risk and reward, it applies to so many other aspects of life as well. Okay. I'm interested. Tell me more. So think about it, right? How much effort do you put into a new project at work? Okay. Yeah. Or how much time and energy you invest in a new relationship? Mm. These are all decisions where understanding the potential upsides and downsides can be incredibly valuable. So you're saying there's like a Kelly criterion approach to everyday life. Exactly. It's about being mindful of the risks and rewards in any situation, even if we're not consciously crunching numbers or using the formula. Right. Taking that mindset and applying it. Exactly. Perhaps we can apply these Kelly criterion principles to those everyday decisions as well. What do you think? I like that it's kind of like, you know, taking a concept from the world of finance and applying it to those everyday decisions. Absolutely. You know, so instead of just blindly jumping into a new project or you know, a new relationship or whatever it might be, maybe we should stop and think, okay, what are the potential risks here? What are the potential rewards? Yeah, it's all about being informed and making those decisions rather than just acting impulsively. Absolutely. But, you know, let's just back to trading for a moment. You know, while the Kelly Criterion offers, you know, a really fascinating framework for managing risk and optimizing those bet sizes, there are some limitations to keep in mind, right? Right. Of course, there always are with anything. So what are some of those pitfalls that we should be aware of, you know, as we kind of wrap up our deep dive here? Yeah. So one key limitation is that the formula relies on accurate estimates. 
okay. of your win rate and the average size of your wins and losses. Right. We talked about that. Exactly. So if those estimates are off, your calculated bet size could be misleading. Yeah. Potentially leading to some unexpected losses. So you really got to make sure you have good data. Yeah. It's like building a house on a shaky foundation. If your data is unreliable, your whole strategy could crumble. And, you know, on that note, you know, past performance isn't always a perfect predictor of future results, right? Of course. Yeah. Markets can change. Strategies that worked well in the past might not be as effective going forward. You always got to be adapting and refining those strategies. Absolutely. And I think another thing to consider is the emotional aspect of trading. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's a big one. The Kelly criterion is this purely mathematical formula. Right. But human psychology, you know, sometimes we don't always make the most rational decisions. Right. Fear and greed are powerful motivators. Exactly. So you might be tempted to override the formula if you're feeling overly confident or maybe really fearful. Right. Even if it goes against that calculated bet size. Exactly. Yeah. Emotions can sometimes cloud our judgment. So it's almost like you got to find that balance, right, between the logical and the emotional, you know, the mathematical and the human. You got Yeah. It's about using the Kelly criterion as a guide. As a tool. But not letting it completely dictate all your actions. It's all about incorporating it into a holistic approach. Right. That considers both the analytical and the psychological aspect. Okay, so to wrap things up, what would be your final takeaway for our listeners who are maybe intrigued by the Kelly Criterion and want to maybe explore it a little bit further? Yeah, I would encourage everyone to do their own research. Okay. There are so many resources available out there that can help you understand the formula and how to apply it. Tons of great stuff online. Yeah, and start by experimenting with it, maybe in a simulated trading environment. Right, no risk. Yeah, or even with small amounts of capital just to get a feel for how it works. Get your feet wet. Yeah, and track your results really carefully and see how the strategy performs in different market conditions. Absolutely, and I, I think you know, the key takeaway here is it's not just about you know maximizing profits, right? It's about managing risk effectively. Right. It's about finding that sweet spot between playing it safe and, you know, taking calculated risks. Exactly. And, you know, the Kelly Criterion can help you do that, but it's only as effective as the data that you feed it. Right. And your ability to apply it thoughtfully and responsibly. Absolutely. The world of trading is constantly evolving, and the best traders are always the ones who are willing to adapt and refine their strategies. So to all our listeners out there, whether you're seasoned traders or you're just starting out, the... Kelly Criterion is a fascinating way to think about risk and reward, not just in investing, but potentially in all different areas of life. 